Call you a lawyer. You can call me a lawyer, absolutely. I'll call you anything I want. I, I want an award. You offer, I, I am so impressed. You know, aspirational figure personality of the year. I love it. It's got to be good. I'm using it to my advantage this morning. Believe me, I've got the boys to polish the award, oh, go and I... get me a croissant. This is going to my. You've coffee. got a croissant. I've got a croissant, oh. but I haven't eaten since last night. So don't don't give me too much of a hard time about that. Right. Oh. What is happening to this country, Tessa Dunlop? For front page of the Daily Mail, the shocking rise of the something-for-nothing Britain. Over half of households get more from the state than they pay in tax, while the top 10% of earners account for 53% of all income tax. What's going on? As it should be, this is just, uh, forgive me, but talk about dog whistle. This is just designed to get people jumping up and down in their armchairs. Oh, it's shocking. It's not <laughs> shocking. It's absolutely predictable. Let's just take the second part of the subheadline. Top 10% of earners account for 53% of all income tax. Right. But half the nation's wealth sits with the top 10% of the richest. Not necessarily earners, but your, your asset-rich group a, a, half of our nation's yeah. wealth in just top 10%. So we'd expect them to be taxed. Yes, equivocably. Um, then let's go for the something for nothing cost of Britain. Well, I will have you know, Bev, I work nine to five. I do my Dolly Parton every day. I've got two children of infant and school age. Mm -hmm. And this something for nothing is suggesting not those who are sitting on benefits. By the way, you can't stand on benefits. You can only ever sit <laughs> on them, all right? Um, it, including our use of the NHS yeah. and, for example, state education. So, breaking news, I am a something-for-nothing citizen because I definitely receive more at the moment because of my children being in state education than I pay in tax. Yeah. But, but, this, the, the division between those who contribute more and take more has steadily gone up. That is the trajectory, yeah. OK? And I want... Um, Andrew Ebert, I want a small estate. I want them to just deregulate, let businesses run, let us run our lives and stop acting with such a kind of patrician role in the lives of people. Something has gone wrong with people expecting something. Oh, you're absolutely right. And this is what they've said and what they're claiming. Ian Duncan Smith has come out and said, look, lockdown changed the psyche of the British people. It did. And I think you've sort of worked it, going back to the Norman Tebbit, get on your bike and go and get some sort of work. But there's a difference. And what Tessa says it is right, because there are some people who go out and work all the hours under the sun. They don't earn as much as some of the top rate of tax people, but they're not scroungers. They're not the Daily Mail sponging off the state. This is more about the psyche. Of the, of the British people. Mm. What is going to incentivise people to get out there yeah. and work? And you'll recall that uh, Jeremy Hunt, he changed the boundaries, if you like, uh, about taxpayers and so on and mm. so forth. So it used to be the top threshold, 45%, was 150,000. That's now been brought down to 125,140. So basically more people who are earning 150,000 were paying £1,243 more in tax. What you need to do is give people the incentive to get out and work. Yes, there's to not enough extent, of that, is there, Tessa? I think it's quite lazy of the Conservative government to blame the one thing that wasn't fully in their control, the coronavirus crisis. Actually, we've shrunk our economy. <clears throat> I know I'm not allowed to say the word on GB News, but no prizes for guessing why our economy shrunk by 5% more than any other country, uh, incidentally, uh, in, no, the, in can, the Western you world. Can, you can Brexit, blame Brexit, Brexit for Yeah, that. Brexit has shrunk the economy. So aside from that, um, the pound in our pocket goes less far. It gets less in terms of the export market. And globally, energy prices have rocketed and expect them to stay high in the long term, even without a war in the Ukraine. That means that the pound goes less far that means that more but of us... But it's the quantity of easing that's pushed the inflation. The fact that we were printing money... That too, yeah. that's COVID. Through a lot, but that was that, COVID policy. That's COVID. So, that's, but, that's separate but, from the but virus. my point is it's not just COVID, but all of it means that previously, in the Blair years, for example, when our economy was booming much stronger than most on the continent, um, stripping ahead, very strong pound, we actually felt pretty well off on two mm. household salaries. So my husband and I, middle earners, yeah, man. But now it's like, whew, OK, we've made the spending. end of the month. That's because they were, they were flogging all the gold and spending everything and as they said when they left there's nothing left in the bank and that was that good it, comedy comedy some... note they put in the thing as, as you say yeah. but it, it is extraordinary it's up, it's up from 24 million under tony blair two-fifths of households is what they were saying beforehand it's now 36 million is what they're claiming which is about more than half um but we need to look at what it actually means so get beneath 
the headlines yeah. and about that sort of stuff. Because how much does education cost? How much does health cost? How much do the roads, all the things that you throw into the and equation? How much of the benefit, you know, and, and the fact that the benefit fraud now is believed to have rocketed to £8.5 billion pounds a year. Including, okay including the Chancellor of the Exchequer, who's just paid a £1 million pound fine. But Whoopsie. He, but he wasn't a benefit <laughs> fraud. Right. Like, there's a real difference. I think there is a problem. There is culturally a problem for some young people, particularly, who are in a benefits culture. And like you were saying, Andrew, about how do we incentivize those yeah. kids to aim higher and work? Incidentally, and though, one of the big jumps are those over 50 in the post-COVID world yeah. claiming benefit. But can we blame them entirely when you've got NHS waiting lists of 18 months? If you can't get your hip replacement, you can't work. But there is so actually, where do you what bit? of the state do you prioritise? Do you mend the NHS to mend people to get them back to work? But it feels like in order to avoid being criticised for being cruel, yes. the Tories are just dead set now on this role of handing out, I will look after you. We were, and of course we need, we need a welfare state to, cut, to catch those people who are desperately, and they are increasing by the day. Yes. But psychologically, something has happened between how we feel about yeah. the state. It's no, getting you, bigger and bigger and bigger. You're and absolutely bigger. right, Bev, and I think this is the problem with the headlines. If you, yeah. if you label everybody as a scrounger, uh, those are 53% basically, oh, they're all scroungers. Including me. Exactly, including, yeah. especially. Yeah. I think you're top pen. of the Thanks list. Thanks by the way, the phone, thanks all. <laughs> <laughs> In lieu of but, but the problem is you're not dealing with the mischief. And the mischief is those who are abusing the yes. system. That's the real thing, isn't it? Yeah. Look at those people who are... Oh, not uh, even abusing it. It's those who just see it as a way of life. It's the psyche. This but is what they, I say. The psyche. Has that changed? This is society-wide, and it's why you can't exempt Nazim at the top to, from the kid at the bottom. It's... All of us now feel, why should I do something for nothing? Oh, I hate the phrase, why should I? But, 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 but I think that yeah. permeates society and that people think, oh, what does it matter if politicians behave badly? It does, because it sets the yeah. national tone. It really does. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about that in our next section, guys. But